Howdy guys, and welcome to another episode of my encounter workshop series. Today, I have 10 amazing encounters that you can utilize in the Underdark for party levels four and five. These encounters come in two different difficulty levels, regular and elite, and they're already pre-balanced using my balancing methodology, which you can check out here if you're interested. And feel free to check out the timestamps in the description down below to quickly navigate to whatever encounters you're looking for. But let's not waste any more time and jump into our first encounter for level four. For our first regular encounter, we have four Fire Newt Warriors. These lizard boys can be so much fun to use, specifically because they are immune to fire, and that opens up so many more opportunities and different ways to utilize them. I would highly recommend that if you do choose to use the Fire Newt Warriors, they have this encounter play out in a lava field, just like the ones you can find in Baldur's Gate 3. This way, the newts can come out of the lava and dive back underneath whenever they want to surprise the party or be able to hide and reposition themselves fairly safely in this encounter. In terms of the mindset to approach the party with these newts, I have two suggestions for you. You can either approach it the religious route, where instead of trying to kill the party, they want to capture them so they can bring them back home to sacrifice to their god, or go full scorched earth and have them completely decimate the party, burning everything and anything they have to a crisp. I would also suggest that the very first round of this encounter happen kind of as a surprise round. Have the fire newts emerge from the lava, opening up combat with their fire spit attack. For our next regular encounter, it's very similar to our first one. However, instead of four warriors, we're dropping that down to two, or we're giving them two mounts, giant striders to be exact. The main way this encounter varies from the first one is instead of the lizard boys kind of playing this hit and run tactic, diving in and out of the lava, they instead have crazy mobility on top of these striders. Not just that, but these striders have a decent fire burst range attack, which can really put a hurt on the party as they either approach them or as the party tries to run away from them. I would highly recommend that you utilize this encounter specifically either as a scouting party for the fire new base as a whole or as just full on mounted cavalry where they try to burst through the party, separate them, single out a few weak ones, take them out and then run them back around and keep doing that over and over again. Really utilize the extra speed these new warriors have in this encounter with these striders because that's going to be the biggest and strongest advantage that they have for this fight. For our first elite encounter, we have two Babao. Babao have the cunning of a devil and the bloodthirstiness of a demon, meaning they're fairly intelligent and know how to fight and they know every dirty trick in the book and will utilize every single trick they can. And sadly, they also have tons of tools in their tool belt to make sure they can really do this. I would say the three biggest threats that a Babao can do to your party is use their weakening gaze to significantly reduce the damage your frontliners can do, levitate to kind of put someone out in the air and reposition them where some place that they can't be useful in, or three, use their heat metal spell, making it so any plateware just completely bakes in their armor. And assuming that isn't bad enough, but Bowels also have tons of defensive resistances that make them really hard to take down. But that's what makes this encounter so much fun because there's so many cool, unique ways that you can really utilize them and keeping them up and running, kind of putting your party on the back foot, trying to figure out how they should approach this and what the best way is to finally defeat them, sending them back to the lower hells. Moving on to our second elite encounter, we have two Shul. These guys can be so much fun to utilize because they're very similar to the Naga, like in my previous encounter workshop series video. Really utilize Shul as some type of magic item guardian, either in an ancient civilization or an Abolith treasure hoard. Now, I know I'm personally biased that I like to have my monsters fully utilize everything in their stat block or at least really show that they are part of that environment. So I would highly recommend that you have the Shul pop out of the water to start this encounter because to me this helps make the monsters feel more alive and not just like random NPCs out in the world waiting to get slaughtered by the party. Now in terms of tactics and mindset for these monsters in this encounter they're gonna be fairly straightforward. They're not super intelligent and are programmed to really just do one thing collect magic items and bring them back to their horde. So they're gonna just focus the player with either the most magic items or the most potent magic items single-mindedly throwing their lives away to just finish them off that way they can collect the items at the end. And for any rogue that's trying to hide in this encounter, that's not gonna be too successful as the shul have a magic sensibility letting them know the presence of any magic item within a certain range of them. So the rogue, unless he's completely non-magic itemed up, he's gonna be spotted fairly quickly. There's nowhere to hide from these guys. 
And for our final elite encounter, we have one Armanite. Now, I think we can all agree, anyone who consumes enough fantasy media knows about centaurs. But how many of us know about their demon cousins from Florida? Because Armanites are just that. These crazy murder machines have so much in their arsenal that makes them an absolute nightmare for any person in your party. Not only do they have a crazy powerful set of offensive attacks, but they have insane magic resistance too. In terms of how to utilize them in combat, well, just use them very straightforwardly. They're gonna charge down the party and absolutely massacre. You should open up combat using their lightning lance ability until they can get into melee range. Cause once they do, this is when all hell breaks loose. They try to knock a player down with their hoof attack, claw them while they're on the ground with advantage, and then use a serrated tail for anyone that comes in and try to aim them like that's crazy what they can do and assuming their lightning lances recharge i would say save that for future rounds that way they can really utilize it for any player that tries to run away or should two or three of them line up to completely blast them again and if you'd like to add another sense of urgency or really up that terror level one more time have the party roll a religion check after the second round letting any person that succeeds know more about the armonites knowing that they tend to move in herds and then flash the players a nice evil grin giving them that that sense of fear that there might be more than one of these in this encounter and they better finish this fast and get out of there but let's be real you shouldn't throw a second one in this fight just the threat of it because two or more of these guys is going to absolutely decimate the party especially at level four and now let's talk about our first regular encounter for level five. One Quagoth Thanot and two regular Quagoth. Now I know what you're thinking. This is a fairly weak encounter on paper due to their low hit points and their super low AC. But honestly, this really isn't that. The magic versatility of the Thanot really brings this encounter to another level. Now, if you've watched my videos, you know I love utilizing every bit of movement my monsters have. And these guys have a climb speed and the Thanot has Featherfall. I think you know where I'm getting here. Have the Thanot all on the ceiling or on the walls out of sight from the party. Have the Thanot cast Featherfall on them as they drop down on them silently, surprising them with this encounter. And if you really want to be mean, have the Thanot cast it larger, either on itself or on one of its allies, so its attacks do a little bit more damage. But that's not even talking about some of the defensive things that the Thanot can do that really make this encounter that much more challenging. The Thanot can cast Mirror Image on itself, one of my favorite spells in all of D&D due to the clones taking so many attacks for you more often than not, really letting a monster stay alive way longer than it should. Plus, it can cast Cure Wounds at least one time, keeping one of the other Quagoth in that enraged state just a little bit longer, letting them do just that much more damage, really making this a fun encounter for a level five party. Moving on to our last regular encounter, we're going with a little bit more of a horror theme here. We're gonna use essentially a necromorph from Dead Space. One Lost Sorrow Sworn. Now, to make sure you can properly utilize these monsters, make sure you keep them either in a dim or a dark environment. That way, they can fully utilize everything they have, keeping their defenses up and making their HP pool stay for that much longer. Now, what really makes this monster scary is the fact that most of its damage from its embrace and its tightening embrace ability is psychic damage, which almost no one has resistance to meaning straight to the life points, almost dropping one player immediately if they get caught. But until they get caught, it's really just poking them with its long arms. In terms of ways that I would recommend to start this encounter, I would say have the Saurus one either in a hut or floating in a river somewhere, being super creepy and eerie, and then jump scare the party, like in Resident Evil or even Dead Space itself. Really pull those horror themes together and scare the party with this guy. Now, for our first elite encounter, we're going to keep this Resident Evil horror theme running. And we're going to use one Hungry. Now, the Hungry are dangerous because they absolutely wish and pray that your party wants to heal up during this encounter. So, to make sure that happens, right before the encounter happens, have some small traps or something happen to just kind of peck a little bit of damage off the party. So when they see this giant monstrosity, they feel the urge to top off their HP, sending it into its rage, giving it not only an advantage on its next turn, but making its bite attack do so much more necrotic damage. This would be so much fun and really punish them for being a little greedy to heal up any chance they can. Making them have to use every resource they can and every defensive ability they can to try to make 
make sure they're not healing. That way they don't send this into another rage. In terms of combat tactics though, it has a fairly low AC, so it's not gonna really target any person in particular and just go for whoever it can. Grappling anyone with its claw attacks and then just munching away at them with its bite and munching and munching until it can't munch no more and then move on to the next person, assuming they don't break out before that. But just like with the Sharwa Swarm, you wanna make sure the hungry is fighting in a dark or dim area. That way you can really utilize its defenses. However, one caveat I would say though is give the party some type of clue that they should bring it out into the light because it has crazy HP and crazy AC, not including the extra damage it does when it goes into a rage when someone heals. So give the party a chance to really survive this fight, but don't fully give it to them. Now we're gonna pull away from the horror themes a little bit more with this next elite encounter. And we're gonna use two Gath, essentially budget beholders. These guys differ from beholders in the sense that where beholder has an anti-magic zone, the Gath instead have a stunning gaze. And if you know anything about combat in fifth edition, action economy is king. So two people getting stunned by these guys is absolutely disastrous for them, especially if they get stunned right before the monster dies, leaving them in the blast radius of their death rows, which can be kind of nasty because no one's expecting them to do that. Now, in terms of any other tactics you utilize in this encounter, that's a little bit hard to give because the iris are random each turn, so you can't really predict what's gonna happen or how you should really position them or navigate them. But using two of these should really make up for a lot of that randomness and their low HP pool. Another fun thing you could do with the Gath is if you plan to use a Beholder later on this campaign, have the party roll an Arcana check during this fight, letting them know that the Gath tend to group up only if there's a Beholder nearby that they're trying to overthrow. Or the fact that Gath tend to also be minions of Beholders, kind of foreshadowing that next big fight. And now let's move on to our last elite encounter, one of my favorite types of encounters using one of my favorite types of monsters, wolves and wolf variants. In this case, for Hellhounds. I absolutely love wolves and their variants for the sheer fact that they have one of the most powerful abilities I think exists in all of D&D for monsters. Pack tactics. This makes them absolute nightmares because the amount of d20s you'll be rolling just for having an ally nearby means so many crits for the monsters which can do so much damage depending on what type of crit rules you run at your table. And if that's not all, the hellhounds have a fire breath attack meaning they can open up this encounter with a nice big crispy finish really turning up the heat in this fight. In terms of tactics though, I would highly recommend you use them like any other pack animal. Have them surround the party for the first round trying to blast them with their fire breath and then after that always sticking in twos, making sure they're always utilizing their pack tactics. As for fun ways to utilize them, I would say have them howl off in the distance, alerting the party that they're being hunted. And then all they see in the darkness is a small red glow that's slowly getting bigger as they charge up their breath attack, ready to roast them. If you found this video helpful and enjoyable, give this video a like and comment down below how difficult do you normally like to make your encounters for your party. And if you'd like to see more encounters like these for different environments, go ahead and check out the rest of my encounter workshop series where I create encounters for every single level in every single environment, which you can check out here. The next environment I'm going to be covering is a swamp environment, so get subscribed so you don't miss out on those. But yeah, see you guys next time.